Today I want to talk to you about expanding your essay to a full five pages, maybe even six. We're going to talk about exploration essays because that's what our assignment is. So this, uh, this video is really geared towards those of you writing for the movie The Words. So E.L. Doctorow wrote, writing is an exploration. You start with nothing and learn as you go. So that's kind of what happens with an exploratory essay. You have an idea, you do some research, like the research you're doing in the library, and you're putting it all together, but you're not necessarily sure exactly where you're gonna go. And in an exploratory essay, that's really the point. As I mentioned before, exploratory essays are different than argumentative essays. Instead of writing to convince the audience that your thesis is right, you're gonna be writing to find out more about a problem. So you're, you're kind of opening up the, the can of worms, if you will. In essence, it's a retrospective of your writing and thinking process as you go through the problem. So it'll describe a when, a how, or a why you completed certain research, um, how things, uh, how one idea led you to the next. This kind of writing is about how you work through problems that require research and writing. So you'll have to be very introspective and think about your thinking process in order to in order for your essay to turn out well. Your introduction should outline the problem you explored and why it's important. In addition, you should briefly describe the issue or the main idea or what's important or interesting about it. Then discuss matters that are directly related, causes of the problem, maybe history of the problem, and then mention people or institutions involved with the issue. So for example, you're talking about the movie The Words. In the introduction, you should be talking about the movie, but also talking about the problem of plagiarism in college, which was part of your writing prompt. So you're trying to put those two ideas together because that's really what you're trying to think about. The last sentence of your introduction is always your thesis. And in an exploratory essay, it makes the most sense for that sentence to be last. The body of your paper. You need to explain the issue and give further back background information, present relevant information. So you'll be bringing in things from the movie or scenes from the movie, maybe even quotes from the movie. You'll also be bringing in your research. You'll be describing the different perspectives of the issue in detail. One thing um, a lot of students don't realize is how badly plagiarism can affect them down the road. And when you look at Rory's story, you have a really good idea of how something will play out. While facts are key in an exploratory essay, it's also intended to tap into your thought process. So I'm learning about how you think, or rather the reader of your paper is learning about how you think. You wanna analyze perspectives and connect backgrounds from where those perspectives emerge. You can look at why Rory um, plagiarized. Rory didn't make a conscious effort to plagiarize. It kind of snowballed and got out of his control. So what's the problem? Is there a solution or multiple solutions or is there no solution? And why are these issues important? Why is it important to bring to light plagiarism in an academic world with freshmen or among college students in general? And is there something that the reader could do about the issue or that you'd like them to do? Remember that you're exploring the issue and while it may be difficult not to form an opinion, you wanna see how your logic develops as you continue to ask questions. And these questions are not necessarily ones you actually write in the paper. You might write a couple questions here or there. But what's a little bit more meaningful is when you write a debatable statement that the reader will automatically be able to see the other side of. For example, you don't have to ask, Will plagiarism erode someone's self-esteem? You could simply say, plagiarism erodes someone's self-esteem. Because both those statements, the question and the statement, tell the reader to start thinking, and the reader will be doing that automatically. Use your process of thinking and developing logical questions and answers to prioritize the issues in your essay. And that comes to how do you want to organize it? Do you want to start with the movie and then move it into academic life? Or do you want to start with academic life and bring in the movie throughout? It's all up to you. The body paragraphs are going to include credible references, which are going to be references you found through the databases in the library. You're going to tie it back to the movie, why the information is important or dependable in relation to the problem, and then some personal introspective introspection on how the source helped you or allowed you to think differently about the problem or even whether it fell short of your expectations. So, the body. We're gonna break that five paragraph essay habit this term. We need to think of the body of an exploration essay as having three sections. And sometimes those sections have multiple paragraphs. In fact, the more you write in college, the more often you'll find that they do. Part one would be a movie summary. 
Anytime you talk about a movie or a story or a play or anything in a paper, you have to summarize it a bit for the reader. Remember, the reader should not have to have seen the movie or read the work to understand what you're saying. When you write this paragraph, or it might be a couple of them, make sure that you use transitional phrases to link the sentence, to link it to the introduction, so that it doesn't just all of a sudden plop down, here's my summary. Part two could be one or two paragraphs again, and it explains the problem or issue. So remember, you're explaining the rhetorical situation. You want to look at the text. So what is the general public opinion of the subject? Is it a question being discussed in the news, or advocacy groups, and politicians? Is it important that the movie The Words came out in 2012, so it's a relatively recent movie? Does that make the conversation of plagiarism more meaningful? You need to think about who the reader is. What audience would be interested in this question, and what are the different positions they hold? Why are readers, why are readers interested in the question? So why should a college student be concerned about plagiarism? Why should anybody um, because it won't just be your peers reading your paper you're going to be appealing to a more general audience of people who maybe who have read who've seen the movie or are just kind of interested in how could something like this actually happen you need to look at the author so who are the people writing on this question so you might do a little bit of research and see is there any kind of connection between the script writers and plagiarism you could probably find it online the constraints so what attitudes or beliefs or circumstances traditions or events limit the people about how we talk about the subject do the constraints create a common ground or do they drive people apart and have them holding different positions. Exigence. So the context of the debate of the issue. So what events or circumstances make us interested in this question now? Can you think or have you come across in your research any relatively recent versions of uh, plagiarism? Uh, is there any history on the issue? How has the interest in the question changed over time? Have we gotten more relaxed about it or more strict about it? And what are, what are the main values, the big life issues that this debate relates to? Now, all of these questions are not necessarily ones you're actually going to answer. Some of them are going to speak more to your motivation for what you're writing. And I know that can be kind of tricky, so make sure you're watching, uh, make sure you're reading chapter eight as well. So part two is gonna be three or more positions on the issue. So for each of the three or more positions, you need to write a separate paragraph. Are there people that are for plagiarism, people that are against plagiarism? Is there a gray area? All of that kind of stuff. So you would explain whatever the position is, Tell why people believe in that position. Make sure that you provide the best arguments you can for that position and explain how those arguments are supported. You can also do some compare and contrast between the positions and doing so is, in a, very, is a very effective transition. So for example, in contrast, the idea that homelessness is caused by a lack of homes, faith-based homeless agencies often argue that there are relationship issues which are at the heart of the problem. Okay, so in this contrasting sentence, you would be wrapping up a discussion about how there's just nowhere to put homeless people and then bringing in a discussion about, you know, the fact that they're homeless is really just a symptom of the problem. You could also say a third position suggests that it isn't a lack of housing or poor relationships, which are the root of the problem, but rather substance abuse or mental illness. So that would be a transition from the discussion about relationship issues and perhaps um, some challenges that might speak to mental illness to a deeper discussion about our homeless population and what substance abuse behaviors they have and whether they have any untreated mental illness. So you start each paragraph with a clear sentence stating the different position. So here's some examples. Position one, you could start with many people believe. Okay. You would answer, you know, what is the point of view? What articles can you use to support this? Another one is other people would contend, or you could even use another way to look at this question is. The conclusion, you must restate the problem you explored, outline some of its possible causes, review the institutions or people involved. So you're going to re-mention the movie again, because the movie is going to have to be, have to come up throughout the paper. Highlight possible solutions, if there are any. And whether or not there is a solution to plagiarism may not be the point of your paper. Here you can include a personal opinion. So if you still have any questions about the problem, and it's okay to have some, you can discuss them here. If you aren't sure what you think, then say that. And then why you think. If you aren't sure what you think, 
Then state that and explain what you do think are the most important points to consider. Talk about why you think you still have questions regarding the problem you explored, where you might look to answer these questions and what forms of research you would have to do. Many students ask, will I be writing this in first person? You will be writing some of this in first person, but just remember that words like I think and I believe are redundant. Since your name is on the paper and I know you're writing it, you pretty much can cross out every time you say a phrase like that, which means that the majority of the paper is really written in third person, even though it's kind of from a first person point of view. So I want to take a moment to circle back to the thesis. When you write an exploratory essay, you're not trying to convince anyone of anything. Rather, you're simply writing about a specific issue. You're trying to create an unbiased report about a certain topic by analyzing it, not debating it. So it's basically a sentence that states the focus of an academic paper and explains what the rest of the paper will be about. But remember, you don't want to announce the topic. You don't want to say things like, this paper is about, or this paper will explore. In an exploratory essay, the hypothesis, which is another word for thesis in this case, could be in the form of a question. It's one of the few times where leaving a question in a paper is actually a good strong motive. If you cannot form definitive answers to your questions, the questions themselves might become key points for the reader. Remember, you're exploring an issue by presenting information to the reader, not by presenting a definite opinion or a solution. You're probably going to write a couple of thesis statements and have to see which one works at, towards the end of the paper. So <clears throat> in Rules for Writers by Dana Hacker, she describes a thesis as a one or two sentence summary of the main idea of the paper. So attempt to capture the essence of your essay in no more than two sentences. And one sentence is much more preferred. She also says, that you should return to all possible thesis statements after you have completed each draft, just to make sure that as you add or take away information, your thesis statement is correct and for the paper you actually end up writing. Rewrite the thesis until you have a version that attests to the major discussion present in your essay and that uses clear and concise language. So a lot of times a thesis statement is one of the last things you revise in a paper because you just wanna make sure that you have proven or explored what you say you are going to. And sometimes as you write that exploration, the thesis statement changes or it needs to change. If you take out your books and look at page 197, you'll get a really great example of this. I'll see you in class, bye.